seated in the presence of the Lord. Our scripture has been read. And if you would allow me to lift up the 17th verse for today's message. He is the Holy Spirit who leads into all truth. The world cannot receive him because it isn't looking for him and does not recognize him. But you know him because he lives with you. Now and later will be in you. So I want to piggyback from last week's message with this thought. Will you see him when he comes? Will you see him when he comes? Life has a way of getting the worst of you. <laughs> Through many trials and tribulations, the mighty hand of life beats away at the vitality of its opponent. And to the physical eye, the devastations of life is visible. All life sees is destruction and decay to the point that what life used to look like, life no longer does. Sickness, destruction, decay, and despair are all byproducts of life's vengeance. We can all attest to the fact that we know someone who, who doesn't look like they used to look like in their youth. Some of us have witnessed loved ones who have physically changed for the worse. Life has gotten the best of them. But the spiritual eye, life has no decay. It does not torment and it leaves no one in desolate places. Through the spiritual eye, although the physical body may fade away, it sees the essence of eternity. This divine vision that comes not from human capabilities, but from one who has promised to lead us into all truths, and one who comes with a promise to come not only unto us, uh, but also abide in us. And on last week, we dealt with the question, what type of Christian are you? John the Baptist informed the audience that the one who shall come uh, after me is preferred before me. John understood that his role was to prepare the way and it was not the way. So he told his audience that he came baptizing in water, but he it is who coming uh, after me that is preferred before me shall not baptize you with water, but shall baptize you with the Holy Spirit. And so we asked the question last week, what type of Christian are you? Uh, do you belong to the crowd that's just been dipped in water? Or do you belong to the crowd that's been dipped in the Holy Ghost? John declared to us last week that, that yes, that he came with water, but the water was just an outward expression of an inward belief. Uh, yes, we all know those who have been baptized for a long time that's full of hell and hatred. We know those who have been baptized just for the sake of it, has been in church just for the sake of it, but, but would never extend out a loving hand to someone who was less than. We all know those fake Christians. 
It's about them and not about what God wants to do to them and through them. Last week, we dealt with two types of Christians. There's, there's one who was just the carnal Christian. Yes, there, there's a carnal Christian, and that carnal Christian has been baptized and, and knows the Lord, but yet that carnal Christian is controlled by the flesh. Controlled by the flesh. And, and, but there's also the, the spiritual Christian who, who knows that they no longer are controlled by what they see, but they're controlled by what they believe. They, they, they see destruction, but they believe that God will take them through yeah. what they see. And so, therefore, the concern with our Christian walk today is the same concern that John deals with in his gospel. Uh, the world cannot receive the Holy Spirit because the world is not looking for him and cannot recognize him. And when you do not believe in the Trinity of God, you cannot recognize the Holy Spirit and his power. Uh, we have become so occupied with the physical nature of life that we fail to embrace the, the spiritual landscape to which God is seeking to communicate with his people. Uh, uh, and what I mean by embracing, I'm not mean, I don't mean just to talk about the Holy Spirit because we got a good talk game. I don't mean just to lift up the Holy Spirit when you need something because we, we know how to play church. But what I'm talking about embracing is living by the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Because God says, if you're going to worship me, you must worship me in spirit and in truth. And it's an impossible to worship God if you're living by your flesh and not by the spirit. And if you're not, if you're not in the spirit, you're not worshiping God, but you're worshiping the one who's coming against God and you don't even know it. And if we are not worshiping God, we are paying homage to the desires of our flesh. Sin has distorted the way that we view life. In an age where everything is permissible, we have become tolerant to the things uh, that contradict the, the word of God. Since God has, since when, it, since when has it become popular for Christians to mimic the world to gain its own popularity. We have become more in tune to motivational seminars that appease our lifestyles rather than to be held accountable for the morality of thus says the Lord. Life in the spirit of truth has become somewhat a mystery to the church uh, for who... Uh, those who wrestle with its meaning find life in the spirit to be an authentic expression of faith, while others look at those caught up in the spirit and they wonder why they, it takes all of that. Uh, they sit back in their religious pri piety and their practical use and declare that Christianity is not that. And, 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 and it's interesting, I even heard a Baptist preacher once say uh, that, 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 that in his church, if someone was speaking in tongues, that they, he would kick them out of the church because they don't do that in that church. And I pontificated on that. And if we are the church is supposed to be caught up in the spirit, and one of the ministries of the Holy Spirit is to be able to allow someone to speak in an unknown language, why would the church kick somebody out who's controlled by the spirit? Hmm. Therefore, to, to cultivate the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives becomes a, a lifelong process. Even though you may not understand the work of the Spirit, the Spirit is still working in areas uh, uh, in your life to teach you and remind you what it means to be a child of God. Some of us have never helped out someone without some, getting something back in return. Some of us have never called someone just to tell them that they love them uh, uh, without the, uh, the whole world got to know that I've called such and such. 
Some of us have never called, uh, went and visited the sick and the shut in. Some of us have never gone to a dying bed and saw someone who not, is not in need of the physical but just needs someone to come and just hold their hands and sing a hymn. To. Some of us have never been used by the Spirit of God because we don't recognize God's Spirit. And so I asked the question this morning, will you recognize him when you see him? Will you recognize the spirit if he sat right beside you and shook your hand and said, how you doing? God's love you and so do I. Do, will you recognize the spirit of God if he rests upon you and told you to do something that you've never done before in your life? Or will you shut him out because you don't recognize him? The problem of our churches today is we got to play church the way we like to play church. As if we can determine how God looks like and what God does and we can determine who God uses and we can determine who is being blessed by God. No, it don't work like that. In order for us to recognize him when he comes, we have to take the blinders off our eyes. And not see as the world sees, but see as God sees. God does not look at the outward appearance of man. God looks at the inward heart of men. How many know you can put on a mask and fool some folks, but you can't put on a mask and fool God? Uh, how many of you know... Uh, you can fool God if you want to. Uh, uh, but in that day of reckoning, God's going to call you out by name. And he's going to tell you, uh, brother man, you have been calling on my name long enough. And every time you called on my name, I showed up in your life, but you were so full of yourself that although you called on my name, I didn't come the way you thought I would come. And I came uh, by one day as a little broke boy uh, at your doorstep. You called on me and I showed up, but you did not let me in. You came and called on me at your sick bed, but I didn't show up as a doctor. I just showed up as a missionary, but you did not have time for me to sit down by your sick bed. Get away from me, my friend, because I know you not. You have been workers of iniquity all of your life. Yes, you recognized and call on the name of God. And every now and then when you want something in your life, you'll even call my son. But you never called on the one who was promised to be with you and to comfort you and to guide you all on this Christian journey. You never called on the one who, like Jeremiah says, that when he gets inside of your bones, it's like fire shot up. Uh, but you didn't see any worth in the spirit. Uh, but now you want to come in and rest in my glory. Uh, but I, didn't my son tell you uh, that if you deny me before men, uh, that I'm going to deny you uh, in my presence? Uh, well, I don't know about you, uh, but I'm so glad uh, that I've been baptized uh, in the Holy Ghost. Uh, uh, yes, I've been dipped in the water. Uh, but I was so glad when I was dipped in his spirit because when I was dipped in the spirit of God, I don't say the things I used to say. But when I was dipped in the water, I did the exact thing that I did before the eye was dipped. But I'm so glad that I have his spirit within me because now that I have the spirit of God, I can recognize him when he comes in. 
who is the king of glory the psalmist says and I can recognize the king of glory because I can see him in the spirit and I don't know about you but when I recognize him in the spirit I can also see the adversary in the spirit because when I see like God sees I see the enemy coming in and trying to destroy everything that the spirit has set up free but the bible says whom the lord has set free is free indeed do i got a witness do i got a witness here this morning do i have anyone who's been baptized by the holy spirit well i know at a very young age you went to the preacher man and been dipped in the water and that's all right but you got to understand who God is for yourself and when you understand the power of God for yourself you realize you need somebody beside yourself do I got a witness here how many of you know that God can do exceedingly and abundantly above all you can ever think of of. How many of you know that if it had not been for the Lord on your side, you would have been dead in your sins? But one day, one day, one day, one day, I, the Spirit of the Lord came upon you and encouraged you to keep on pressing on. He encouraged you that no weapon formed against you shall ever prosper. One day the Spirit of the Lord came down in your house and saved your family. One day the Spirit of the Lord rest upon your job and saved everybody in your job. One day the Spirit of the Lord visit your church and resurrect some dead folk in your church. Can I get a witness? 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 Will you recognize him when he comes? Will you recognize him? when he comes the good news here in the text I'm almost through is that the Holy Spirit was sent to the disciples to remind them of Jesus teaching and to understand his commandments mm -hmm. the disciples at this time now have someone to to guide them through the times of trouble, through dangers seen and unseen. They, 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 they no longer have to depend on their physical capabilities to deal with the unknown. Uh -huh. They don't have to peep around the corner to see who's coming to watch out for danger because now they have one who sent before them, literally before them, that all they have to do is follow him and every danger that they may come into, him already takes care of it. And God is telling us, we, we too have the same Holy Spirit. We don't have to trust in our own innate abilities because the fact of the matter we mess up on the simplest things in life the fact of the matter is we can't get nothing right of our own we need to learn how to wake up with the holy spirit because the fact of the matter is when you go to sleep you are dead and you cannot wake up yourself by yourself once we get to a place where we have to depend on the Holy Spirit, uh, we have to understand that, uh, as Paul says, we don't rest, wrestle with flesh and blood, but with principalities in high places, which simply means that the battlefield is not in front of you physically, but the battlefield is in your mind mentally. And if the battlefield is in your mind mentally, uh, you don't have the capabilities of seeing something that's not there. 
therefore we need and depend on the spirit to reveal all things to us. Without the revelation of God, we don't know what uh, tomorrow brings. Without the revelation of God, we will not see visions and we will not have dreams. Without the revelation of God, we, will, we won't know what to expect. We will walk around this world haphazardly, bumping into every Tom, Dick, and Harry, but we have the advocator that will come upon us and reveal all things to us. But we have to change our minds. That's why Paul said, says, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. It starts in your mind. You cannot consume the power of the Holy Spirit if your mind is trapped in your world. Some of us have walked around here for many years with a twisted mind. Thinking that we are Going to see God in his glory. It's tight, but it's right. Some of us understand God the Father. We know how to obey the Father. You can tell those who are imbalanced in their Christian walk. What I mean by imbalance is they only have a lot of one and none of the other. Uh, they, you know them by their fruit. They're always talking about order. They're always talking about the order of God. Uh, and they don't understand God as the Son nor uh, the Spirit. But you know that other crowd as well. That other crowd knows the son but don't know the father and don't know the spirit. You know them. They say that if you had not been baptized in the son, you have not been baptized at all. They are imbalanced Christians. They are cardinal Christians. And then you know the others. Yeah, the others who like to make a lot of noise. They have no order and they do not.